welcome back to the channel. This is Football Carnage. This is Prop and Post Match Carnage with me, Mush, and Keith. Keith is anger eating. He's hungry. He's eating away, munching away. Uh, we are here to discuss what we witnessed. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone had an amazing Eid. Whoever was celebrating all around the world. Eid Mubarak from all of us and everyone on my channel. Uh, that's first and foremost. Uh, and after that... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start, Mush. I don't know where to start. Normally we start with the lineups and I guess it starts from the lineups. Uh, six changes made from what was a very good performance at Old Trafford but awful finishing. Six changes. Did it warrant six changes? A quarter final of a champ, uh, a European competition. Did it warrant six changes? In your opinion, I I personally think what these changes kind of meant to me was that what was produced at Old Trafford wasn't good enough, wasn't serious enough. So for me, it wasn't it wasn't a case of oh my goodness, you've disrupted the team in great momentum. It was more the fact that, that some changes were needed because at the end of the day, if you're creating chances and not taking them seriously enough to score them, how about we bring players on who are hungry to get minutes in the first team and, and actually play? And I'm sure as we continue this discussion, we'll talk about who looked hungry to actually do something. But ironically, those same players that we felt didn't perform well on Sunday came on to play crap as well. So, you know, Klopp was warranted, was justified both ways with who he started and how they looked when they came on. So, yeah, that's looking forward to getting into it. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Some people are saying, I need to check my audio again. Just give me one second. No, it's fine. I'm connected to the... the I can hear you. I can hear you fine. And then it's always, so we can hear each other, but it's always the people. Maybe I don't want to speak very loudly. Maybe I'm doing it on purpose. Maybe it's a ploy um, that I can end the stream and say, oh, technical issues, and I end the stream. Do you know what I mean? One of those ones. Keith, Mush says, and I didn't want to go straight into it, but I guess we're going straight into it. He thinks it was warranted and Klopp had a right to change it and freshen it all up. I'm going to start with the big man himself, Jurgen Klopp. I think he set the tone in terms of not focused. I don't think the lineup, the selection was focused. We've gone through the 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 the, the thing about Konate playing in midweek and Kwanzaa playing in the league games. Gomez at right back, unless Bradley was injured or maybe rested. I don't know. It seems like he was rested because I don't think Trent's going to start on the weekend. So Gomez at right back, uh, who was horrible. Simikas, we how many times have we discussed on this show? How many times have we said you play players for rhythm, but you have to have some history of rhythm? He just suddenly threw Simikas in the quarterfinal. Um, and the rest of the lads, I don't even want to know where to start, where to go. I thought it started from the big man selections. The... Uh, this defeat lays firmly on the feet of Jurgen Klopp. This tonight was a big disgrace, and it's all on him. Absolutely. For me, what the... Are you making six changes in the quarterfinals of the Europa League for? Why? What? First of all, let's look at the changes that were made. You changed the entire left-hand side of the pitch. Why? You took Mo Salah out of the pitch. Why? You took Konza out of the team. Why? There was no reason, there was no justifiable reason why any of those changes should have made. At, m at most, if we want to call, like, okay, maybe a change you could have argued here or there, maybe Darwin Nunes himself, even though he can't hit a barn door at the moment, maybe he should have been the one that shouldn't have started the football match. You should have started with Cody Gappo through the middle. But that when I saw that team sheet, that team sheet, it was a message from Jurgen Klopp that this is not serious. I don't respect the opposition. I don't respect the fact that Atlanta have not lost a game in the Europa League this season, right, and have made it to the quarterfinals, and I don't respect my opponent. Tonight, it lands on Jurgen Klopp, and I don't know, maybe he's doing that thing where, do you know what, don't miss me too much, so let me give you a crap performance like that. And let me throw on players that are 
uh, 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 a psychotic. I'm, if he's doing that kind of shit, he's a psycho. <laughs> I mean, you know, no because way. if he's doing it, he definitely it definitely worked tonight. That team selection was a disgrace. The players that played in that, I will give some of them the benefit of the doubt. This is the first time many of them have played in months. But to go into a Euro European quarter final without your best players playing for me sets the tone for the entire tie, and we deserved everything we got. Yeah, it, it, Mush, I don't know if you want to come back with something as well. I, I think no, I, 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 agree I can see. Like, yeah, I can see like, Keith's point. At the end of the day, quality is quality, and someone like Mohamed Salah won't go two, three games without playing well. He's probably desperate to make up for whatever happened on Sunday as well. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I'm really looking forward to talking about this game because I don't want the result to confirm the performances because the performances were bad enough to speak on for themselves. So, yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, Conroy's in the building. Um, I see some, of course, I see some uh, non-Liverpool fans in the building. We here, man. <laughs> you here. You know what I mean? We deserve everything you throw at us today in the chat. Mods, no blocking unless it's abusive. They're allowed to take the piss out of us today. We got put in a, as my friend Rant said earlier, we got put in a panini, he says. Um, we did. We got put in a panini. This team, um, this team at Atlanta, um, Keith, I don't know if you remember, they beat us last time as well. Was it beat us or drew? I think they beat us last time. This yeah. Gasparino is a wild old, wily old fox. Um, this aggressive man-on-man -man style that he put in place, we didn't have an answer, Keith. We just didn't have an answer. And normally, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, in years gone by over the last few seasons, you know, when teams come at us and try to defend one-on-one -on -one against us, mm -hmm. we used to have a field day, an absolute field day. We didn't have a clue today. Uh, and I think it goes back to the selection again. Just a serious lack of pace everywhere except Nunes, who looked like he was walking in mud today as well. The man for man marking can put us, has, you know, it's two, it's two sides to this, right? We like, you're, you're right in saying we've blown teams away, but sometimes when we, they've man for man marked us, if they've got the legs to continue that for 90 minutes, then a lot of the times it can, it can put us in an issue. But the issue always comes down to this. When you're having players that are pressing you like as, as, as hard and as quickly as they are, you need to have the sharpness of mind, games in your legs, to be able to move that ball as quickly as possible when it comes to your feet. So someone like Curtis Jones, who's not played football in I don't know how long, since what? I mean, he's not played in what, two months? February. Hasn't played February, February, right? We're in April now. Uh, Shimikas, who's not played any since football. February. Yeah, 13th, 13th Feb, him and Jota both got injured. Shimakas hasn't played since January, right? And you're you're deciding that okay, we're going to build up the majority of our play in that first half in the, on the left hand side, which we were doing. Then of course we were going to get caught out every every so what every time the ball came to us, we were we were there was no cohesion. Endo McAllister had a poor game today as well, so you know, but there was no cohesion within the side. So you are one hundred percent going to invite pressure on yourself. Then you've got someone like Kanate who for me at this moment in time is so off form. He's struggling. So off form. He's struggling. He's third choice right now. So He's why? He's, he, he, can't, he lost every duel with Samaka tonight. Every duel. Every Brother. pass. But, he, but listen, can we, can we, look, we're going to get into slaughtering our players and look, and we've been glorifying them and talking nicely about them and, and they deserve every praise they get. But Mush, um, we need to put, before we get into our players, Skamaka schooled us. That was an ultimate number nine target man performance. I thought he bullied both us at the back. That from was. The start, without no pace, with just with just high level movement, strength, hold up play, positioning, finishing, he schooled us in the backs. That was, that was like watching, you know, Grizz, you've watched a fair bit of football. That was like watching a Zlatan in 05. It was white watching a Edin Dzeko in 2012. Just a guy who knew how to use his body, knew how to use the ball. Even the time when they scored their, their um, third one, when we all thought he was going to put Coop Miners through and he just took an extra second to put an even better pass into, into I can't remember the, the Brazilian midfielder's name that they had, but uh, um, Edison, uh, Edison. Edison or something, yeah. 
it was just it was a masterclass, man. It was a and and the biggest difference was with what Keith was saying with how the midfield was struggling was where you watch Liverpool with three attackers on the pitch, unable to provide a single option to the defenders that were on the ball. Skamaka was the glue that relieved Atalanta again and again. And it wasn't three of him. It was just one. So a, a damning indictment on, on the Liverpool attackers, just as much as a compliment to Skamaka as well. I don't know where to start. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Okay. Um, first and foremost, guys, close to 600 of you guys in here. You know, we know a lot of you are in for, for, for fun. And, you know, I mean, this is the house of pain right now. We're going through some serious pain. But uh, smash a like button. Do it for clock. Go on. Do it for clock. Smash a like button if you may. Get, where do you want to start, my broski? I don't know, man. Fahi's in the building. Says pain, pain, pain. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I wish you was on to share that pain with us. Do, do, do you know why? Why don't we start? Why don't we start on the fact of? So we're Tell talking me. about we're talking about this man for man marking, yeah. If if man for man worked every week, every team would do it. Mm -hmm. But what what do you guys think it was about us today that meant it worked? Because the only thing I observed was we had such little idea in how to move the ball quickly, like Keith said, that I felt every other touch today was Kelleher on the ball. It just felt like the only pass available was back to Kelleher because we had so few clever ideas in possession. You're, you're spot on. The only spare man, the reason why I was going back to Kelleher because he was the only spare man. Like, literally, he was the only spare man. Gakpo had the idea. Yes. So when you play man-to-man, -man, you have to have one-on-one -on -one demons in your team we took them out Salah wasn't playing Diaz wasn't playing so Bozla, as shit as he is he can still run past a player you know shit as he is it was worse I should say McAllister you can't doubt him I think they doubled up on McAllister their tactics were down to a T so if McAllister misses one challenge another one they let Endo have the ball they let Gomez have the ball. They let the players that they knew... And Endo, by the way, who for some reason in the first half was playing deeper than our two centre-backs when he was on the ball. It was fascinating. But yeah, sorry, carry on. No, no, nothing sorry about oh, it. You're, you're, look, I, I I don't know where to start. I'll, I'll tell you where I'm going to start, Keith. We've, we've discussed and we've discussed about Klopp. Then I'm going to go on to Virgil van Dijk, who I thought set the tone in that first 10 minutes casually chasing the ball, getting beat up in the corner. And, you know, we've discussed Virgil van Dijk. And don't let the haters tell you that he's not one of the greatest centre-backs this Premier League's ever seen. But today, he set the tone, just like Jurgen Klopp, and then his captain, by getting caught on the ball, by being so lackadaisical. It starts from the very top, Keith. You have to be on it. When you get in the situation with man-to-man -man and your midfielders are uh, essentially snuffed out, right... You have to then rely on your centre backs to effectively bring the ball out, if you will. I just thought Virgil and Canate had no confidence in in what they were doing today. Right, as soon as Virgil got done on that, as soon as Canate he lost, I think about two aerial duels early against Samaka. From then on in, they had no confidence to bring the ball out. You know, to be in dictating possession. You know, typical Virgil Van Dijk picks up the ball, sprays it from left to right. There was just no confidence in, in what they had to do. So they were on edge all of a sudden because they were like, oh, damn, okay, Atlanta, they're a football team. Wow. Oh, my Keith, God. Keith, the, the only place I would disagree with that, although I agree with the premise of it, is that I felt from about minute 15 until half time, embarrassingly, the player who was beating the press most was Konate when he was driving out with the ball. But his pass execution was horrific today yeah I would it didn't look nice which is, which is it, my it, point. It, 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 you know what mush sorry go on, Keith. sorry mm. no which is my point is exactly that it's it's the it's the confidence to do it right which was completely lacking and i felt like there was uh, there was another moment we could talk about if we talk about the midfield for example first i think 15 minutes there was really nice play between jones endo yeah, it was all one touch it was all one touch, one that touch went through, moving yeah. it around cut them open right brilliant football i think that ended up with darwin nunez going through right and 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 but again, there was just no confidence to do that. Once they got snuffed out a few times, it was kind of like, ah, oh, like wow, like it, it, again, it's almost like everyone was just surprised 
that this isn't going to be like facing Toulouse at home and it's all the bloody whoever we knocked out the last round where it was just a walk in the park. Everyone was a bit like shocked. Why they actually can play football? And that for me was what I think was the wake up call. And in football, if you go into a game like that, you can't, you don't just win back confidence. You know what I mean? Unless you get a lucky goal, which we, you know, we go on to, you don't get that confidence back. Right. And the more that gets taken out of you as the game goes on, doesn't matter whether you're bloody Liverpool or whether you're um, uh, who's bottom of the Sheffield United, that confidence can get knocked out of you against a European team. You're in big trouble. And for me, slowly, slowly, piece by piece, confidence was being taken out of our board, board distribution and it killed us. Super chat from Darwin, son of ITK, Chris Tetra says, do it for club, huh? Football is a humbler. Absolutely. We got humble today. Football is a humble. Like exactly what Keith's talking about. We we complacency from the start, and we got absolutely smashed to bits. I, I'm not joking with you guys. I think three 0 flattered us. Three 0 flattered sure. us. You know that. Shane McGee, uh, big up Shane McGee, channel moderator and, and channel member as well. Big, uh, uh, sending a generous super chat. Thank you. He says this team should have been more than capable of playing well. Has nothing to do with players being out. Everything to do with mentality. Atlanta were brilliant. The subs came on and were terrible. We're going to get on to that as well because the, because the subs didn't have any impact on it. Uh, Zane Miasi, uh, Arsenal fan, says, Arsenal winning the league, Liverpool crumbling. Yeah, well, let's see how that one goes. Uh, I guess yeah, I guess we should, we should mention the only time we actually did test the keeper, Harvey Elliott, with a great effort, which was, which was the unlucky. The keeper didn't well, save it. I don't the think the keeper made... I think the keeper, made, I think the keeper yeah. made about one save. Uh but yeah, Harvey Elliott is the crossbar, and that was the best bit. That's the that's the Liverpool highlights. Yeah. Um, uh, now I knew. Well, I suppose let's talk, well, well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. That once again, through on goal, right? Only the keeper to beat, and Darwin Nunes doesn't even hit the target. Again, it was it was, it was disgusting. Again. I mean, it's, it's like you know, okay, it's all laugh and banter when we're talking about it in flipping October and November. But this guy, seriously, we, you know, it, it's not acceptable as a striker not to hit the target in these situations. When in, you're in a European quarterfinal, when you get the first chance or first couple of chances, Curtis Jones, by the way, what a sublime ball. Turns, beats a man, beats a man, and then plays the most sublime pass. Mush, <laughs> what was he trying to do? Uh, I'm, what I mean, kind of finish was he? What kind of finish was he trying to do? Because the the conventional finish would have been like like an ornery type. I'm not comparing. Yeah, you fucking opening, opening, you know your, body I mean? up. opening yeah, yeah. your body up and just trying to put it into the corner. He tries to do the Brentford finish, but that mm. was direct while you're through. Yeah, yeah you're straight on. Yeah, you're yeah. straight on. This one he tries to. What's the word I'm looking for, guys? When you bend your ankle in a different angle, like. Contour, I don't know, contour or whatever. Like he's trying to twist his ankle so he can scoop it over. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I mean, look, guys. Putting it simply, I, I always thought Darwin was going to be this, which is this is a player that can sometimes go no goal in twelve, thirteen games. You then get the other side, which is he had nine goals in eleven games. Now we might be shifting back to a time where the numbers are going to look ugly again because I think it's been quite a few games since he's, you know, bagged. So this is just what we're going to get, guys. And and I, th I guess the biggest thing, and we'll probably talk about what the bigger picture means, is that back when we had a prime Mohamed Salah and a prime Sadio Mane, you had sure things. Whereas now, with your Diaz's, your Nunes's, there's quality there. There's occasional you know, dismantling of opposition. But there's also times where they're completely ineffective. So we're back to having attackers that are not sure things on the pitch and all of our hopes and dreams are are sitting on that. So that's it, man. Um, I guess their opening goal, Keith, comes after a... <laughs> well, they should have oh. I mean, how Kelleher, Kelleher doesn't save that. I don't count those as saves, I'm not going to lie. And I'm not just being harsh on Kelleher, any keeper. When the ball hits you flush in the face like that, that's just unlucky for the attacker, in my opinion. Or, okay, maybe not unlucky, but should score. That's not a lucky he meant to do that. I was worried, Keith, that that's going to impair his vision. Did that have any influence on the opening goal where he dives 
over it completely. It doesn't, it does like, he doesn't even, he, he gets there too early. Or I don't know. He dives completely yeah. over it. Good move. We've seen that move against us. Pull it back to the edge of the box. Um, McAllister Endo not in a good position. He doesn't anymore. even connect with the ball. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't connect. connect to the ball. It goes underneath him. If any vision in, in, in parity, yeah. sorry to say, in look, Paris. I like Kelleher. You know what, Kelleher, you know, big up Kelleher, yeah, for all he's achieved. But he's he he can and will let in goals like that because at the end of the day, he's just a decent keeper. That's it, he's just Straight a decent up. keeper. You know what I mean? And 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 he's a decent keeper who's going to make situations like that. And that is why in any top side in the world, you need a world-class keeper, right? Who will not make those type of... Alisson may do some batched shit crazy things from time to time. But the one thing that I've never seen Alisson do is letting goals of that kind of nature go under his body. It was appalling. Do I blame the sight of the vision? I just blame the way that he dived. I honestly like it was it was just slow. It was just slow to react. It was straight at him. It was it was a keeper error. You he could, dived I mean, over it, man. He dived over it like he went underneath him. Like he, I don't I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, it was a lot of brainless things. Your pick for starters, Arif says Jota, Nunes, or Gakpo. I don't think that's a hard question at all uh, for me anyway. I mean, and I'm sure they all agree. Actually, I'm never going to ask their opinion. Everyone agrees, Jota. Is the is this is the starter there? Um, one nil, one nil, Dan. We've done it before. We've seen this before. We we need a goal to start us back up again. Uh, at what point did you expect Mush anything to happen again? Um, half time, one nil, Dan. We've got a, a. We haven't even had a chance to talk about the subs or the players that we've got coming back. Should Triple they change, even be? Triple change at half time. Might we add? Well. What did you? I mean, you was going mad just before we went live about that change. Go on, give us, give yeah. us your thoughts. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the, my big thing is all about players that play with momentum. It's something I talk about all the time. If you're in a good moment, it doesn't matter who you are. You don't want to disrupt that momentum you're in. At the end of the day, Dominic Sovoslai had an absolute stinker against Man United, and I'm not talking about he made a big mistake or anything like that. Every time he got the ball, we became worse. And what happened today against Atalanta, I thought he was busier. I thought it was better. But Dominic Sobozlai right now is not helping Liverpool look like a team that are more likely to score. Someone like Harvey Elliott came on at Old Trafford, changed the game with lots of quality. Harvey Elliott today had the best, took with his own quality, the best chance that we possibly had. We, I would say moving Harvey Elliott from right wing into centre mid would have been a more impactful change for this team than bringing on someone who has stunk for ages, man. Has stunk for ages. And it's fine. He's 22, 23 years old. I'm sure next season he will find his feet again. But right now, we don't need to do this caring stuff of let's help him get back into form. We have nine games left to define Jurgen Klopp's final ever season at Liverpool. There is no future after that with Jurgen Klopp. Is it eight, so eight games, isn't it? Well, eight. I'm saying nine, including this second, this, this first leg. So no, well, one, one, one more second leg, and then seven league games, eight games. Yeah, yeah. That, it was nine I mean. games. It was yeah, nine yeah. today. That's what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But that, that was my big thing, man. Like, what did Elliot do badly to come off? If we both, if we all remember, I'm sure Keith, you were screaming at the screen. We're in the first half. Cody Gakpo had two opportunities to put Harvey Elliott in on goal and he yeah. did not take them. So, so we, one, cannot, so, so, we so, cannot say, but sorry, Grizz, we cannot say Harvey Elliott doesn't move well. Harvey Elliott doesn't have attacking instincts when he shows them and doesn't receive the ball. We can't blame Harvey for that. Do you know what? You just reminded me of those chances, yeah? Mohamed Salah's through, Harvey Elliott's through. How many times have we seen Bobby Firmino, even Jotra in that position, play that pass through and, and it's a goal? It's so it's such a basic move from us. He, obviously, we've broken the press, or I think we broke the press. I think we broke their man-to-man -man marking about four times in the whole game. That was twice in about five minutes. The first pass, Keithy overhits wildly. Overhits, it's not even close. At least he attempted it. He attempted. And the it, second right? one, he bottles Mush. Keithy yeah. bottles yeah, it the yeah, second yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he doesn't, have, he he doesn't have belief in his ability the second time. He doesn't even try it. Yeah, he, he turns in on himself. I will agree 100% with Mush. I could not understand why Harvey Elliott was brought off at half time. 
Curtis Jones, I could completely understand. Shimikas, I could completely understand. I'm surprised Endo stayed on the pitch as much as he did. There's yeah. one thing as well. Yeah, yeah, I could not understand the Endo staying on the pitch. Like, but there's one thing about that that the Endo and McAllister, which which can be very frustrating as well, particularly when we get into situations like this, and we do a lot this season, right? We used to, we still slaughter Henderson, uh, Wijnaldum, Fabinho. Oh, they were always safe. They were always pass it sideways. Um, never looking at the forward ball, never trying to break the lines. We sometimes, in situations like that, try the force to break the lines oh, and lose yeah. the ball on turnovers so many times. And that game tonight was an example of that because McAllister tried to be too clever. There was one way he tries a pirouette in the middle of the park and gets caught counter-attack. Overconfidence. Overconfidence. Oh, take the ball, go left, go right, go back. Let's build, let's get out of this situation, right? Let's build the confidence in, 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 in the game. So for Elliot to come off, who I thought was the only bright spark, who was popping up, who was trying to make things happen, to take him off, I thought was a, was, was a real... It was, it, was, it, was, it was scrambled thinking, guys. It was Klopp further scrambled thinking. The selection was scrambled thinking. I think it was a lot of gambles taking place, especially with the shape and you're right. I don't think enough homework was done when you're playing a man-to-man -man system. You need one-on-one -on -one demons. We literally took out two of our best one-on-one -on -one demons, three of our best one-on-one -on -one demons. Even Bradley's a fucking one-on-one -on -one demon. We replaced him with Joe Gomez, who's totally the opposite. He's had a brilliant redemption season. But I've <clears> said it before, he's awful on the ball. He's like... Forget forget that, though. It, it, I agree he was awful on the ball today. But the one thing that we're talking about, about Jurgen Klopp teams when they're trying to attack, we all know that the fullbacks are pressure relievers. Because it's the two... The, your left back and right back are the only positions left in football where you can't mark them, yeah? Guys, those two pressure relievers, le relievers yeah? When they re receive the ball, Keith is completely right. Simikas is coming in completely cold. So I'm I'm very forgiving about Simikas today because I have seen Costa Simikas, when he gets five, six, seven games in a run, he is a good player. But I will honestly say, since Joe Gomez has been had he had a poor game for England again uh, you know kept getting sucked in he had a poor game against Forest got sucked in again I love the usefulness that Joe Gomez has shown but guys I think we're hitting a point now where players are averaging out to the mean of their quality level meaning I'm not saying Joe Gomez will play like this every week but that Joe Gomez we saw inverting and whipping the ball around the corner and things like that that's not who he generally is and he was, I'm sorry to say it, Joe, you are probably one of the loveliest guys at the club. He was absolute shite today. Everything he did were defensively, offensively. I, I want to shoot the person who told him about this goal record. Because ever yeah. since he found out about this goal record, these crap shots we keep seeing, I've had enough of. It's not funny anymore. Yeah, that, that's it with Joe Gomez. But I'd, I'd like to know your. I'd like to know your thoughts. No, no, no. We've said enough about Joe because I don't think it's. I don't think yeah. it's one of those. Shall I be honest, Mush and, and Keith? I don't think it's a. It's a game where we have to single out one or two. I think we need to speak on all of them. And I've and I've been fair to speak from the very top, from Klopp and Virgil, and then it emanates to the rest of the team. I, I mean, I'll ask you guys if there's anything or anyone that stood out or any grain of hope or anyone that showed anything, but I, I, I'm going to struggle. Uh, a couple of Super Chats. Our very own Noor is in the building. No beats. He says, Klopp's farewell. Not like this. 100%. Not like this, man. What's going on, man? Uh, early goal and they will shit themselves over in Italy, Cully says. Inexcusable tonight, but can't give up. Must react on Sunday like a wounded animal first or am I just dropped? Anything important uh, like the league title tonight? No, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, man. I listen, the least you guys can do is smash the likes and subscribe in it. Like, absolutely, 900, yeah. 900, 900 of you in here to watch us cry, moan, bitch. You know, what I mean, it is what it is. We're here to take it. We're here to take it, Keith. Um, what's going on after that? One nil up, two nil down. Oh, sorry, one nil down. Half time changes. I don't see. I think there's a five minutes of Whoa, let's go, let's go. Five minutes, and then boom. Second goal was an absolute humbler and a killer. Can you explain what happens there? Like Skamaka, the number nine in an ocean of space. Like what's going on? Yeah. 
uh, laziness. And 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 I suppose uh, it takes me to, I suppose we're going to do all the players and it's a player that for me at the moment is third choice centre-back and it's Canate. Like, first of all, why is he playing, so deep? Why is he so deep? Why are you so a? Why are you so deep trying to play offside? You're you're clearly completely out of it, and you do not have the legs to take you to to run and catch up with Samaka. You do not have Joe between Joe Gomez and Kanate. None of them man had the legs to catch up with Samaka, who was literally in the box by himself. He was more shocked that he was in the box by himself than probably anybody else on the pitch. So playing that offside, I, I think you're leaving out. I think you're leaving out the captain though. Like he's no, not oh, blameless. Oh, no. Oh, well, Virgil was casual, casual. I mean, but again, like, when I look at that situation, again, I'd, I'd say the whole whole back three in that moment because Kanate tries to play onside. Virgil's lackadaisical. Nobody comes in to, to play Samaka. There was other situations in that second half as well where Virgil and Kanate were so... <laughs> there was so much space between them two. You'd think they've never played football together before. Uh, yeah, neither do I, soccer god, neither do I, to be honest. You. you know what I mean? Like, they, you would think that, but then again, this all comes back to the chopping and the changing and the chopping and the changing and the chopping and the changing, right? What what was the reason why Kanate came in tonight? I just don't understand it. Konza, play him. There's nothing that, other than the back pass against Man United that can come and go. And, and another also, thing, Konza, Konza's absolute beautiful on the ball. But when you're playing a one-on-one -on -one system, like the old... The, the, remember the classic Joe Matip? Remember him? Yeah. Joe yeah. Matip was a was someone a who line can breaker bypass, yeah. bypass midfields and players, right? He was a line breaker for us. Mm. But we played. Look who we played on the right side. At, this is not 20, hindsight. Twenty twenty twenty. Joe Gomez and Konate probably probably two of our worst um, mm. players on the ball. So when you're trying to break a press, you got Joe Gomez. And Konate and Endo forming a triangle of sorts. And then you've got an out of rhythm Simikas on the other side. And like you said, Mush, you've got Curtis Jones starting after three months or whatever, two, three months. Listen, I mean, uh, it didn't make Jones, sense. Grizz, I mean, Curtis Jones, Curtis is, is so good, right, when he's got rhythm. But we have seen Curtis when he comes back into teams after being out. Takes time. Takes time because against Man United, guys, Curtis Jones looked like he didn't know what was around him, kept getting pickpocketed. And again today, it feels like at the moment, if you appear from behind Curtis Jones, you're going to get the ball off him. And that is something when Curtis Jones is on form, you don't associate at all. He's the probably the best player at the club at looking after the ball when it comes to, you know, beating, pressing and dribbling and stuff. But... I mean, we're all talking about Trent, Jota, Jones, Allison, all of these guys coming back. But guys, what we might slowly be seeing is us expecting them to hit top form from game one when they return is not guaranteed. And that's a, that's only, a very we've only got we've only got seven games left. So if it takes three, four games to get into form, my fear. My fear, my fear. I think we spoke about it uh, last week when I said my only fear and apprehension about all these players coming back and you oh, we got the squad we're coming back if it takes two or three games for them to get warmed up we're finished we're done titles over europa's over uh, and that's that because that's my apprehension you're right all of those players curtis jones trent jota actually jota usually doesn't take time but all allison do you remember we had that debate about Allison and 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 I think Fahi was laughing, saying, "No nah, man, well, you got to bring Trent Manager. It takes time. These guys, it was ill judged. I think that too many changes, six changes, is way too many for a for a quarter final of a, any European trophy. You could tell Atalanta have been walking through games in their Serie A because all eyes, all of their focus was on." But but Grizz, do you know do you know what doesn't help? And this isn't this is irrespective of first team or squad or anything. That stat that they the commentator read out today that this year at Anfield, out of nineteen games we've played at Anfield, we've conceded in fourteen of them. <laughs> How are we giving ourselves a base to win games if a clean sheet is so hard for this team to get? We don't we don't give ourselves a ba base. I mean. Keith, I don't know what you think about that, but I just think 
it's so fun watching this team, but it's kind of fun because we know we're not that good. Because when we were amazing, everyone, including me, could shut the TV off when we were 1-0 up because there was no chance we'd concede. Those yeah. days feel so far away. In a I said, I've said this for a while, said this for a while. In a title race, you never want to be the great entertainers. We are the great back, entertainers. Back. Newcastle, do you remember? So many times, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fulham, yeah. Fulham, 4 3 with Fulham at home. That's who we are this season, right? And and that's a fitness issue, that's an injury issue, that's an availability issue. That's the fact that we can't play the same back four most games. That's you know, losing goalkeepers, losing X, Y, and Z. When we have the amount of changes that you make, you become the great entertainer. So you have to win every football match by at least four, uh, two goals minimum to even stand a chance of, of, of winning a football match. My only the only silver lining I have, Grizz, which you asked earlier in terms of all the players that have come back, the only one that I think looks like, okay, he can slot straight back in is Diogo Jossa. Diogo Jossa was the only one popping up in the box. He was the only one that was like, at one stage, we're trying to score a goal. He's the only guy in the box trying to try to score with a header. He was the sharpest. He was the only one that could take on a man, beat a man. Almost won a penalty straight away as well. Almost won a penalty straight away. You know, throw him straight back into that team as far as I'm concerned and put Darwin Nunes on the bench again because as far as I'm concerned, Nunes has had his chance and, he and you know, in, in, in the big moments, he's got a lot to learn. Um, Rams, Raz, Rams says, um, Klopp has lost the team. We won't win anything. Klopp was too early to announce his moving out. All of these questions will be thrown, will be spoken about in the last six weeks and obviously depending on how the last seven league games go, we shall address that accordingly. What the what was the wisdom behind that and all of that will come out now. Because this is what happens. When you're a big club, when you're a big personality, when you're a big manager and you make a big call and you announce a big call in the middle of a season, all of these things have pros and cons. And every pundit, every expert told us, no, this is a positive. I wasn't sure at the time. I was thinking why. I was trying to work out why and I'm still trying to work out why. And maybe why will come out but whatever's happened has happened um we have seven games to go um i don't want to discuss the third goal it was a shambles which i don't even remember it's a blur oh. it's it's a blur <laughs> it's a blur honestly i don't remember it it's a blur um three nil um well, a lot of mate, players it was our mate Sabozlai that cost that goal no problem Go for it we don't, we don't need to analyze it because, like yeah, I we said, we, all, we yeah. already discuss, discussed the fact that it was great play from uh, Skamaka. But another thing I found super interesting from what Keith was saying about the work in midfield, when we lost that ball in the centre circle, Edison and two other Atalanta midfielders ran into the box. I didn't see a single Liverpool midfielder actually tracking back to get there either. So that was the story of the game. If it comes to pure appetite and who actually wanted to put their body on the line that to was win probably that game. A, a, That was probably a very good, yeah, exactly, showcase of the whole match highlights. If you want to see the whole highlights, watch their third goal. Beating us, pressing us, winning the ball, attacking us, winning the second balls and finishing it. It's alive to the third ball, you know. I, I, it is... I, my cousin made a really great point whilst we were watching the game together. Guys, tell, please, comments, tell me if I'm wrong. Did we win all this long ball that we pumped today? Did we oh, win a single aerial battle today? It is, but that, but you know what? That's it, it, it's no surprise. But we we're, before we even signed Darwin Nunes, my one critique of Darwin Nunes is that he is not he's physically a big tall guy, but he is not physically imposing in the air at all. Every ball that goes up to him, Cody Gakpo can't win headers to save his life. Diogo he's six four as well, by the way. He's six for Diogo Jota wins more headers than either of them two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Shane sends in a super chase. Is at the beginning of the year? We all agreed it was going to be 17 18 clock. Having to outscore opponents, I think that's been spot on. No cohesion at the back and too much pressure on the front three. No cohesion because we kept changing it. I don't know many Premier League teams, guys, that have won the Premier League. And correct me if I'm wrong, chat, and you guys tell me that make these many changes in the back line throughout a season you have to you can change up front sometimes in the way on the wings rotate the forwards and the wingers you Listen, keep the back four as stable as you possibly can even the greatest team probably of of this era manchester city manchester city are you third to reel off their back four they, exactly 
right? But but this season they they say they're struggling. Yeah, they're struggling because the likes of Carl Walker's been injured, the likes of Stones has been injured. They they you know Guardiola's come in, come out with with form. They've changed their back four so many times. That is your spot on, Grizz. You cannot win a Premier League title unless you have your back four <laughs> solid and going from minute one. The Arteta didn't decide to make any changes uh, against Bayern Munich, right? For exactly the same reason, Klopp needs to figure out it, it starts now. And do you know what? Maybe a defeat, too late. maybe a defeat, maybe a defeat was needed because we've been riding our luck. And I think a defeat is a wake up call to everybody in that squad and in that team. That as great as this season has been, very very quickly and very soon, that it can it can turn into a nightmare. Because if Liverpool do not manage to win the Europa League, in my opinion, if they do not manage to get to the final, that will be the biggest upset in European football for some time. Um, Absolutely no way a team, Liverpool, stick out in the Europa League like a sore thumb, right? If they get knocked out of the Europa League by Atlanta, if they get knocked out in the semi-final by Benfica or Marseille, whatever it may be, that is the biggest shock in European football in many a year. Wow. Um, F94 says, to be fair, Villa only Premier League win to win this week. All about who responds fastest, who can't. Liverpool, Arsenal, we both must get seven wins because City definitely will. I've been saying this for a little while, Mush. We're going to finish up now because I think, um, um, as you can see from the comments... You've been, I think, you've uh, been yeah, summoned. Yeah. I, <coughs> I've been summoned. Uh, seven wins is what I think is needed to win the league. Um, thank you for that super chat. He said the same thing. Um you know, we need uh, whoever recovers the quickest. Arsenal are still in it. Of course, they're in it. They don't need to recover as much. We need a massive recovery. Um, spirits, mood. That's United draw, a loss. And today, smashing. Uh, and then there's Palace <laughs> awaiting I mean, us. Uh, I don't know. I think we need seven wins. I, I can't see it. I, I, I suspect this is... Uh, a horrible, horrible ending to the season. I mean, Grizz, I mean, Keith just talked about one aspect of what a title winner looks like, right? So there are some very common factors or common characteristics we see of title winners. Defences win titles. We hear that all the time. We don't have that. Normally, an attack in a, in a league-winning season scores about 60 goals in the league. We're nowhere close to that. Normally, league winners have at least... Seven players that rack up more than 35 games. We're not going to have that this season. So I find it very interesting that we've all called it the 17-18 Liverpool, yet everyone seems to have forgotten where 17-18 Liverpool finished in the league that year, which was fourth. So we're trying to remember the best of that team without remembering how it actually panned out. So for me, all of my hope about Liverpool winning the league this season has been emotional in terms of Young, Klopp leaving, so on and so forth. It's not been based on the quality level. And my mentality now is I've hoped for this long. I might as well hope for the rest of the season. If it hasn't been logic based now, why am I going to suddenly start being logical with one month to go? Like that, that's the way I see it, basically. Um, uh, so hold on, some, let me just block a few dickheads because people think that, you know what I mean? I'm one of those that allows all comments just because I've got a lot of people listening and watching me. I can't give a shit. If you're going to be rude, if there's 20 of you, if there's 20,000 of you, if you're going to be rude and disrespectful, I'll fuck you off my channel, even if you have a go at any of my contributors. So anyway, Kieran says, time is up, Grizz. Time is up, indeed. Uh, it looks like time is up for Liverpool in the Europa League. The big, huge, massive question will be, is time up in Liverpool in the Premier League? <laughs> Only time will tell. Uh, it is now time to go to the big six. Good Thank luck. you, Mush. It was an, it was an uh, hard, easy. Uh, Keith, it was an easy. Thank you, chat. Over 1,100 of you guys in there. Smash a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And I guess we'll see you over the over six. Um, as you keep telling me, don't go anywhere. Take care. Peace.